This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by FreshBooks. We all know that it's always a really, really bad idea to just leave your computer setting out somewhere for somebody to easily get physical access to it. So today, I wanted to give you a great example of this using a Mac. Because yes, I do own a Mac. Not by choice, it's for work. So today I'm going to show you this very simple way to actually get into root access on a Mac in under 10 seconds with a USB rubber ducky. And I apologize in advance, I have a cold, so I might be a little bit sniffly. You can also do this with a USB flash drive, and I'll mention that at the very end of the article. Now first off, I'm just going to show you the USB rubber ducky side. It's pretty easy to do, but I'll give you the exact rundown on everything that you have to do from just downloading the Ducky encoder all the way down to actually putting the script on your Mac. So let's go ahead and get started with the first part, and this is just simply downloading the Ducky decoder and the firmware for your USB rubber Ducky. Now the most up-to-date version is available via the article in the show notes, so I can go ahead and skip over that part because it's pretty simple. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab my USB rubber ducky, this guy right here, and the second thing I want to do is I'm going to hold down the button on here and then plug it into my Linux box so that I can run the USB flash.sh process so I can get the duck encoder onto here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my computer. Yeah, I think my finger slipped. So once I have this plugged into my computer, I already have the terminal open, and I'm going to type in lsusb to make sure that I can verify that it shows up. So lsusb, and at the very bottom you see Amtel Corp. Now that is the USB rubber ducky. So I've already verified that it does show up and it's been flashed, or it does show up correctly. Now what I can do is go ahead and flash the hex encoder onto the USB rubber ducky. So to do so, I type in sudo flash.sh space and then duck underscore version 2.1 dot hex and I press enter and of course it's going to ask me for my password wrong password now what this does is it erases any original data on the USB rubber ducky, then it flashes it, and it's going to validate and finish flashing the entire duck. So hooray, your USB rubber ducky should be in working order. Now I'm going to pull out the rubber ducky and then make a new script for this segment called source.txt. Now this is the script that is going to be placed onto the Macintosh to create this vulnerability so I'll be able to basically root into it from anywhere. Super fun. So I'm going to unplug the USB rubber ducky. There we go. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to change the directory into my duck encoder folder. So I went ahead and changed the directory into my duck encoder folder on my Linux machine. And you can see in here that I've already created this thing called source.txt. And that is that text script that I'm going to be using. Now, when you first create this script, it's just a simple text document. And you can copy and paste it straight from the article. Now, I'm going to go ahead and nano into it so I can show you exactly what's going on in this script. So nano source.txt. Okay, so we see a whole bunch of stuff going on. I'm going to just skip down to about here. So the first thing that we do is make a directory, and this is making a directory, a hidden directory actually, dot hidden. After that, we're going to echo this script into this connect.sh file. So once you've echoed that information into connect.sh, you're going to change it to be an executable file. Then we are going to make another directory called launch daemons. And under here, we're going to echo another command, and this is going to be a plist. And I'll scroll down here. So this echoed information, this plist right here, is going to be what happens whenever you turn on your Mac at the very beginning. Down at the bottom, we also notice that it's going to restart the connection every 60 seconds. So if you disconnect on your listener device, it'll be able to reconnect to the uh, shell. And at the very end, after you've created this plist and turned it into this com.apples.services file, you're going to chmod that to 600. This launch control load means that this com.apples.services.plist is going to start up whenever you start up your Macintosh. And then at the very end, it means shut down 
right now. So right after it's loaded all that information onto the Mac, it's going to shut down the Mac again. So it looks like nothing's ever really happened to the Mac. You can walk away and pretend, well, nobody ever even touched the computer. So it's a very simple script. You just copy and paste that onto your micro SD card for your USB rubber ducky and you're good to go. So once you have all of that information ready in your source.txt file, you can compile it and install the script by doing the following. And this is going to be java pack jar encoder dot jar tech i I, yes. source.txt. So this is inputting source.txt and outputting tech o it as inject.bin tech l, which means language, us. So basically what this is doing is compiling the inputted script called source.txt and outputting it to create inject.bin with the US language keyboard layout. So for example, if you're using a UK keyboard layout on your Mac, you can change the very last part to tac L space UK or vice versa or what have you. So once you have that done and I'll press enter and it's going to tell me that it's loading the file, it's loaded the keyboard file, everything is okay, language, ducky script and the ducky script is complete. So I know that everything is okay and everything went well in this inject.bin. So if I ls now, I see I have inject.bin here, and I also have source.txt if I need to change anything in there. Now, at this point, I can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is moving that inject.bin to my ducky SD card. And this is very simple. You just type in move mv inject.bin to your USB. So mine is slash media slash, I think it's, it starts with A8 something. I guess I should plug it in to make this work. Huh. Yeah, A87B. Okay. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to move it over there. Press enter. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Dang it. Okay, so that has been moved over. So that should be all set to go. And then I can ls over to media, and it should be there. So I'm going to make sure that this is correct. ls media slash slash a h okay there's my inject on bin and i also have this stuff folder okay so that is all set and ready to go now i can take the sd card out of my computer and plug it into my usb rubber ducky and i also want to go ahead and make sure that i'm setting up my listening pc while i'm at it on my linux de device so what this is doing you're going to be using the same website import that you used in your source.txt document from earlier now you'll notice in the article that i'm mentioning as well as in the text document that i created earlier that it says wi-fi pineapple.com and then the port 1337 of course, whatever your server might be and whatever your port may be that you decide to listen in on, you can use whichever one you choose. And you can also check out my Netcat series and hack tips to figure out how to do that in Netcat because we're going to be using Netcat for this example. So very simple to do as well. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this from my machine. There we go. And I'll put this into my ducky. I'm going to bite it. It's easier to get out. There. If anybody doesn't know how to get your USB micro SD card out of there, that's what I do. I just bite it. Okay, so this should be all set to go. So now I'm going to set up the listener computer on here. So I should be able to do this by typing in ssh snubs at wifi pineapple.com. Uh, could not resolve wifi pineapple.com. Name or service not known. So that obviously didn't work because I didn't have the Ethernet plugged in. So let's try that again with the Ethernet actually plugged in. Okay, so <laughs> that again was SSH snubs at Wi-Fi pineapple.com. And I promise I plugged it in this time. Ah, it says cannot resolve. Why not? Is it turned on? Oh, wired connection. Hold on, let me try this. And I'll put in my password. 
Okay, so I've established my connection with wifipineapple.com. Now what I can do is go ahead and run the netcat uh, command to actually start listening on port 1337. To do this, you type in nc tac l tac p, so that's listen, tac p is port, and then 1337 is the port number, and press enter. Now you shouldn't see anything after this until it actually has a port that it's listening on and it gets some kind of information coming back to it. So at this point, you're pretty much done on your Linux machine until we actually boot onto the Macintosh. So I'm going to get on here. Yes, I know I called it Macintosh, like an old school person. And I'm going to shut down this machine. And you should see everything happening behind me. Go ahead and shut down. This should just take a couple of seconds. And then what I'm going to do is plug in this USB flash drive without holding down the button when it boots up. So I'll wait for this for a few minutes. So now we're going to plug in, go ahead and restart. And when you're restarting, hold down Command and S the entire time. There it goes. OK, so you can see that we've gotten into root. I can go ahead and let go now. And I'll let it continue. OK, so at the very end of the screen, I see root pound s. And that basically means I'm in root, so I'm good to go. So now what I can do is plug in the ducky when I get to that command prompt, and the script should automatically run. And there's a delay of about 2,000 on there so that it has time to recognize the ducky. It turns green. And then as soon as you see the computer shut down, that means that everything is good to go. So when done, you should be able to catch your shell. And the listening computer will tell you that it's connected to root. All right, so after a few seconds, after the Macintosh has been booted up, I, I already put in the NC tac l tac p 1337 so it's listening. And then it'll take a little while, but eventually you'll see bash, no job control in the shell. And then it'll show you bash. So we are now in root, so we can have some fun. So the first thing I wanted to try out was typing in who am I to see who it says I am. So let's try, try this, who am I? Okay, I'm root, awesome. So I'm actually the root user, this is hilarious. So now I can try to do, let's see, change directory. I'll change it to uh, user, there we go, okay. Tab completion does not work. <laughs> So I can do CD snubs. Uh, what's in here? I can show my desktop, so CD desktop. And I did mention this as my work computer, so I have like all my stuff, all my Twit stuff. That's hilarious. Let's see, I can go into CD Shannon's stuff. Oh, I wonder if I have to put, oh, I guess that won't work. Okay, so we saw that I got disconnected because I hit uh, control C, but I can easily get reconnected by going back into Netcat and waiting a few seconds, and then it'll just reconnect as long as the MacBook Air is online. So it got me reconnected, and then I'll just do, let's see, where was I again, CD. Users, and it was snubs. Okay, CD snubs and desktop. I know I'm doing it the slow way. Shannon stuff. That's where I wanted to go. So CD Shannon backslash apostrophe s stuff. Let's see if that worked. Haha, <laughs> cool. So I got all my backgrounds in here that I had uploaded. That's awesome. So yeah, I have root access to the MacBook Air. So now I can play, I can have all sorts of fun, and I can do all sorts of nefarious things if I wanted to. Or I can teach people about how important it is to not leave physical access available to your machine out in the open. Like, don't leave it there at a coffee shop when you go to the bathroom. Take it with you please. So I did want to mention you can also do this with a USB flash drive. It just takes a lot longer since you have to type everything in yourself at the Mac. You're not going to have that ability with a USB rubber ducky who will just 
you can just plug it in and run the code very quickly. You can also do the same thing with Linux, with Grub. It, it only just requires a little bit of physical access, and then all bets are off, and you could do whatever you want. So that's the important thing to hear about here, is the moral of the story is the physical access. That's so important. And of course, if you accidentally disconnect or anything like that, you get reconnected every 60 seconds. So of course, that doesn't matter. Now, I did also want to mention that Patrick Mosca, who is the writer of this article, he said, the only sure way to prevent unwanted root access to your system is by simply enabling FileVault's full disk encryption, not the home folder encryption. Now, since this encrypts the entire drive, it will be impossible to access single user mode without a very strong password, and then your problem is solved. So it's a perfect example of why encryption is important and that physical access. Now, I hope you enjoyed this. I did. I have a bit of a cold and I apologize for that. But if you enjoyed this or if you've tried it yourself or if you have another way to gain root access into your Mac, please email me feedback at hack5.org and we'll be right back in just a few moments. But first, a quick break. Are you guys still using Word and Excel to do your invoices? Are you keeping your receipts in a shoebox? I mean, let me tell you, you can save so much time with FreshBooks and it is the easiest way to send invoices, to manage expenses, to track your time. FreshBooks is a very simple cloud accounting system that is helping thousands of entrepreneurs and small businesses just like yourselves, you know, save time billing and get paid faster. That's what you want. With FreshBooks, you can easily create invoices. You can capture expenses. You can get real-time business data and reports in just a few clicks it's so simple and get this you can try fresh books for free today over at getfreshbooks.com and here's the really delicious part about what FreshBooks is doing for the hack five viewers uh, every day they're giving away someone who signs up for fresh books using our referral a birthday cake it doesn't even have to be your birthday so go over to getfreshbooks.com and when they ask you how'd you hear about us enter in hack five for your chance to win that sweet birthday cake with FreshBooks, every day could be your birthday so sign up at getfreshbooks.com and we're back and now it's time for the technolust photo of the week and this one comes from ilari he sent in this photo and said, so yeah, I took this a few months ago and while I was watching videos on YouTube with my cat Paimon, and he wanted to watch videos too. He's so cute! I want to take him home and squish him because he's so adorable. Thank you for sharing your Technolust photo, and of course, if you want to share yours, you can send them to feedback at hack5.org with the subject line Technolust. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5, but before we get going, I wanted to mention that we love you, and we care about you, and we care about what your th friends, and what your friends might think of you, and if you shared this video with your friends, they would probably think more awesome of you, so you should just do that, spread the love. It's Give true. love to everyone, right? Everybody the loves the Hack 5s, mm -hmm. and you will be an awesomer person for sharing that We would greatly us. appreciate it. We would, yeah. Yeah, Make so thank you. Make them subscribe too. Yeah. Like, hold them at sword front and be like you have to subscribe or just send the video as a link or hit the likey but i don't even know what you're watching <laughs> this on but hit the whatever the likey button is yeah or the share button it's on the blue dd blog if you're not on facebook yes so it's on facebook Whatever. with that said hack5.org slash follow is where you can find all the places to you know stalk us on the social media uh and let us know what you think at feedback at hack5.org it's where you can you know email us in and let us know what you'd like to see on the show which is really oh. great because we get great to if we have a, we have a store it's hack shop did you say anything about that yet? no no okay. but hack shop hakshop.com is our store and you should go there because we have awesome things you can support us directly and you could get a pineapple or a duck or an uber tooth or a bag or some batteries or Yay. some other fun cool hacker gadgety thingies and it keeps this show on the air which is what are you, really great. What are you calling the bag are you calling the hacker i bag like holding? to call well <laughs> no Oh, hack a bag of holding. That's the coolest name. Uh, hack pack. Some people call it an EDC bag or an everyday Ooh. carry bag. Oh, that's good. So cool. it really just depends. Okay, but, I like that. I mean, it's cool. it's a bag, and you put your hacker stuff in yeah, it, and then you go. Stuff. Yeah, Fun. actually, I like. I can't. The fact I can't wait that the to big go to one, the next con and yeah. wear that around. The, the big one is great for uh, panel antennas because you can Ooh. put a big, like you know, directional, 12 degree directional uh, panel antenna in your bag, and then you can position your body so it's like pointed towards your target. 
and get like extra D DBIs up into oh, their, that. you know, what. So with that said, thank you for supporting us directly and watching Happy all the way to the end. So <laughs> Easter egg, you won the game. Oh, oh you just lost damn. it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, until next time, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Yes. That's no. It's conduit. Huh? Ow. Yeah. See. What do we have in the airbox? Yay!